Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three in the UK. And as you've seen him before, this is my husband, Phil. We have been married 10 years this year. We have three children together, as I said. And I've had a few requests um, from people to see more of Phil, especially dads who are watching this. Um, you've asked to see more of Phil, you've asked to hear from him. And obviously the focus of this channel is kind of my perspective on um, home educating because it's not really your thing, is it? The YouTubing, not the home educating. Not the YouTubing, no. No. So um, I have appeased you <laughs> and he is going to be appearing in a few more different things, mainly stuff where you don't see his face and it's more focused on him doing something with the children. Um, but I have convinced him to do a little q and A. I have um, thought up some questions that I thought you guys might want to hear from his perspective and um, see what he has to say. Now this is not rehearsed, um, as far as I'm aware he maybe has flicked through these questions but we have not discussed what his answers are going to be and I'm going to not edit this so it's going to be completely raw, raw Philip brain. <laughs> okay, you ready? Uh, yeah. Okay, so number one, what are your main reasons behind wanting to home educate our children? Um, I didn't have a great experience at school and looking at how Charles was doing when he was very young at um, learning a few things we decided to talk to a school or a couple of schools and see what they thought whether they would just make him redo it all or whether they'd move him up a year they both said that they'd probably just make him redo it all and knowing how he hates repetition we decided it was probably best that at least to begin with we uh, carried on teaching ourselves and then the other two just kind of fell into it because we were already doing it okay do you worry what do you worry about most in relation to home educating or the children being home educated um, what do you worry most about about the whole thing or do you not worry about anything not really a lot I mean I I'll always worry a little bit that they're not learning the right stuff all the time. But I know that you're constantly going back to the national curriculums just to give it a kind of overview of where they should be at, at where, where they are at the moment and things. Um, I mean, possibly the other thing is if they go all the way to GCSEs and they struggle to take the actual exam, that's potentially my own That's uh, something that you struggled with though, didn't you? I did. I, when you, you were at school, you went all the way through I mean, and you really struggled with GCSEs. Yeah, the exams are not my fault. exams time. in general, yeah. Not an exam style, not having to remember the whole year's worth of yeah. the information in one tone, no. So, uh, what do you love about home educating our children? I love that we can do it anywhere. Um, including on holiday because we've taken stuff with us yeah. when we go on holiday. Sat in a before. caravan in Lou in Cornwall. Yep. Homeschool time, children. <laughs> um, and it can be done absolutely anywhere so we can be out in the forest and be on for a walk and they can be learning something. Um, and they're always at home because it is nice for them to be at home and it's nice to spend time with them. Um, what do you what do you hate about home educating? Is there is there something that you're just like this is a side effect of our choice that I really I don't like? Well, they're always at home. <laughs> See, when we did our pros and cons, I did a collab video with educating the mad lads, and that was my thing. I was like, my pro was well, they're always with me, which is amazing. Con, they're always with me, which can be really really trying. <laughs> I'm so glad that yours is the same. Like, yay, they're always at home. Oh my god, they're always at home. <laughs> um, I guess the only other thing really is that sometimes if they are struggling with something and not being able to communicate why, it gets very frustrating that I don't know what, what they're struggling with so I can't help them to go through it. But because we're at home, because we've got the space, I can normally just say to them, go away for 20 minutes and we'll come back to it Yeah. and we relook at it. We've got that ability to just say, take a break, go, go play on Minecraft or go yeah. watch TV or go read a book or go bounce on the trampoline and 
there's no like we don't have set lesson times do we it's just no. like you can just go away and have a break go and have my big thing especially with charles is and with bessie actually is go have a snack go get yourself something yeah. to eat get yourself a drink go and watch a show you know one of your favorite shows on tv completely disconnect from what we're doing right now and then it also gives me i don't know if you feel the same it gives me some time out like because yeah. i get frustrated i'm just like why are you not getting this like banging my head against the wall like Gives me a chance to rethink yeah. what I'm saying as well. Because at the end of the day, I think there's a a quote, isn't it? It might be Albert Einstein or something that said, um, if the child is not getting it, it's not. If the child's not understanding something, it's not the child that's slow. It's the adult. Yeah. Because it's the, ad, like, as adults, we're the ones that can go, hang on a second, we can change how we're explaining this we have that emotional maturity we have yeah. that just general maturity where we can go hang on a second i need to do something different and it's the same with your parenting like you can as adults we're the ones who say we can change our behavior we shouldn't be forcing our children to change how they react to us we can't do that that's yeah. not gonna work so uh number five do you wish you were more involved in the planning and teaching than you already are planning god no no. I'm You're horrid. not involved in the planning at all, really, no, are you? <laughs> I am horrid at planning. Especially big, complicated things like this. Teaching, yeah, a little bit maybe, but I'm never going to love doing English. No. I will always take the maths and the science, so for the English. Well, see, I, th I think that works quite well, and I have talked about on the channel before that... Maths is not my strong point, and anyone who's watching who knows me well knows that I started struggling with maths around year four. I'm quite happy. <laughs> I'm quite happy to outsource maths to you because I know at some point there's going to be a point where I'm going to go, I'm having to learn this at the same time. And whilst that's okay, there's also going to be a point where you're going to have to do that for English because there's a point where you were just like, you yeah, just didn't engage. Point. You're at that point now. I'm pretty much at Bessie's that doing phonics. You're not at that point with her. Spellings. <laughs> so I think that that's good. I think that that plays to our strengths. Yeah. And like the, I love doing the MEL science boxes. I think they're really cool. But also, there are all of the videos we've done on the MEL science have been Phil doing them because you like that more. You enjoy that more, and it's a family channel at the end of the day. Although the focus is my perspective, it is a family channel, mm -hmm. and you get to do those things so it, i think it makes sense like it, when charles is doing more history when the kids are doing more history i will take that oh god yes. because i love history whereas i'm not really a fan of geography whereas phil's just like hey that's kind of like science <laughs> moving on how do you deal with criticism from people who disagree with home educating and not just i mean i don't necessarily mean keyboard warriors i mean closer <laughs> closer people as well because there have been people close to us who don't say anything now but they did and if they're yeah. watching this they know who they are <laughs> and you know who i'm talking about who criticized us in a way that at the time made us feel quite attacked yeah how do you if if one of those people or even just someone random on the internet was to comment and say something about us home educating and criticizing us how would you how would you feel about that and what would you do i mean i feel like that's their opinion that's their choice um like it's our opinion and our choice but exactly i explain why we do it and then say they're not your kids so it's not really anything in your business so yeah i think that's the it thing it doesn't like, bother me i find it really emotive and i'm just like come on then let's let's have our deep and slightly heated conversation about this um and I will defend it because it's, I know it's what's best for the children. I don't think it. I know it's what's best for our children. And we've said this before. We don't give a monkeys what anyone else does with their kids. As long as you're not, you know, horrible and abusive. Like, that's the only time when we might have an opinion about it. But, like, it's the same with all parenting, isn't it? It's just another aspect of parenting. Yeah. You want to breastfeed your kids? Great. Good for you. You want to bottle feed your kids? Great. Good for you. You want to use disposable nappies or cloth nappies or co-sleep or put your kid in their own room from day one? Like... As long as you're being, as long as you're making informed choices, you're doing a great job, and that they're right for you and your family. And I think it's the same with home education. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. 
la la la. Next one is, what's your favourite subject to teach them? And you can have different ones for each child. If, if you prefer teaching different things to different kids. Because I certainly have. I prefer teaching one subject to one child and one subject to the other. Well, up until recently, Charles was really easy with maths, and now yeah. he's kind of... He's not struggling with it, he's just, he just doesn't like getting it. bored, I think. Yeah. Um, so, Bessie, maths. Yeah. Charles, English. Yeah. But I think Bessie's, <laughs> Bessie really enjoys maths, um, which I know if there's family members of yours that are watching this, will probably be doing a little happy dance. Yeah. Um, and Bessie really loves science as well, doesn't she? She really is into yeah. maths and science. If you say to her what you love to do, she's just like maths and science. She's like which 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 book do you want to do first? Which was your favourite? Oh, maths. Do maths, maths, maths first. Maths yes, first. do maths, maths, maths. But she just gets it. Like it just zooms straight through it. We actually moved her up a year in her maths books. Um, as we've talked about before, we don't do any formal education until they're seven. You know, we are very we are completely child led. Um, hello, my, our cat's going to join. Um, hello, dear. Um, we've completely child-led until age seven. Um, and it's kind of six going on seven yeah. or just after seven, depending on the child. This is Madison, everybody. Hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> so she technically has been starting off with um, higher-end reception stuff because she knows all of her phonics and stuff, because we've done that as part of her preschool education. So we then went to, to do her, um, give her reception level maths to like zoom through it, knowing that she would, um, it would be easy for her because she's older. And we didn't even finish it, did we? She was just like, what is this? No. <laughs> halfway through didn't she and then we went well let's try something this, a bit yeah. more challenging so i went and bought the next level books and she's still zooming through them like yeah. she did two lessons yesterday didn't she and sorry that's our dog shaking and moving the camera when you're done dear when you're finished thanks um so yeah um she loves maths and i i think i prefer doing english with charles as well just again because he seems to be more interested in it and mm. he enjoys it more so it's easier like there's no do i have yeah, to yeah he just gets on with it doesn't he yeah yeah i i would agree with you those are my favorite things to do as well what is your least favorite subject to teach them so reverse Robert, reverse you hate teaching bessie english and charles maths yeah yeah okay bessie doesn't want to do the english because at the moment she's doing all the low level stuff so she's moaning that she knows it all and knows it all then you get something and she goes i don't know it yeah and then she gets really frustrated and she like she was crying with you yeah yesterday because uh, she didn't didn't un, didn't know the answer but instead of working it out she just burst into tears instead which was yeah. really sad phil was like i could hear him i was upstairs doing some painting because we're redecorating the house and i could hear phil being like i don't understand why you're crying what's wrong because she was fine and then she was hysterical and you were yeah. you were like What's just happened? <laughs> you, I do, what? <laughs> oh, living with women, eh? <laughs> um, so this one's a one. This one's a tricky one, I think it might be because you don't, you're not involved in their goal setting and planning just because you don't want to be, not because I don't let you. Okay. Um, which is again an opinion of some people in our lives think that I'm the one who's driving all of this, and he's not allowed to have an opinion about it. Um. He doesn't have an opinion about it because he doesn't want one. You don't want to sit and pore over the national curriculum or various curriculums because we pick and choose from all around the world of what kind of things we use. I say we, I, because he doesn't do it, because he doesn't want to. He's like, just tell me what to teach them and I will teach them. But I don't want to decide what to teach them. I think you feel, I think we've talked about it before and you said you feel like it's a, too much of an adulty decision for you, essentially, haven't you? Like, it's just too much... Like that, yeah. yeah. So, what would you like to see each of our children achieve academically this year? Is that something that you think about? Is that something that you've thought about? Occasionally. The dog's shaking you. She's scratching her ear. I'm really sorry, everybody. Earthquake! Dog quake! <laughs> Hope the camera doesn't fall over. Everyone, hold on tight! Oh god! <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Seriously. You could scratch your ear anywhere else, love. Um, I'd like to see Bessie reading. Yeah. Confidently. She's really... She's close. She's really... What's the word I'm looking for? Not Stubborn. Not receptive, it's the other one. <laughs> Resistant. 
to reading. She knows all of her sounds and um, I'm gonna zoom out a bit so you can actually see me as well. There you go. Um, she's really, she knows all of her sounds. She can blend really easily. Mm. Like she, she knows her high, <clears throat> her high frequency words. But when you say to her, Bessie, could you read that? She goes, no, can't read. And you're like, well, if, if you sound it out, no, nope, can't read. And you're like, yeah. yes, you can. <laughs> Um, but Charles went through exactly the same thing. Yeah, didn't he did. He? Yeah. And then suddenly he was like, "Cos to ah, that says Costa," and we were like, yeah. "Ah!" He was trying to do it everywhere, wasn't he? And then was yeah, and then was reading everywhere, and then it's just encouraging her to read. If she reads um, her early readers every day, I know she'll get it because exactly the same thing happened with Charles, and they're very similar. <laughs> oh, too similar. Yeah, too similar. Sorry about that. I had to sneeze. Um, so Charles, what would you like? You'd really like to see Bessie reading. Confidently, and what would you like to see for Charles this year? I'm not sure. Well, he's doing money at the moment. Maybe, maybe um, implementing that in uh, everyday life a bit more because he's getting there. So when we go into a shop, him so, paying yeah. and, and knowing how much change he's going to yeah, get. Yeah, something like that. He is getting really good with with mental maths as well. Like just you know doing things in his head, and if yeah. you can see him go like. That's 13 pence, like, yeah, kind of thing. So. Yeah, I mean, English side, he's pretty much just getting on to grammar and getting through that. And I hate grammar just as much as anyone else. Yeah, fair enough. Obviously, Albert is preschool age. He would be starting school in September if he was going, which he will not be. I know, it's mad, isn't it? It's absolutely mm. mad. I swear I only birthed him, like, yesterday. Like, we were in our living room. And this tiny little bundle of fluff was just, you know, yeah. what? Um, talk of the talk of uh, the little pit munchkin. Here he is. Um, he heard us. Um, <laughs> are you gonna show show our friends your 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 helicopter? Oh, it's very cool. Oh my god, we dropped it on the cat. That's that's <laughs> unfortunate, isn't it? Um, everyone wants to see Daddy's face, actually, rather than you. Thank you. Um, what would you like to see for Albert? What would you like him to achieve this year? Because obviously he's doing preschool level stuff and um uh -huh. oh yeah, everyone, look at this car. Isn't it cool? Um, what would you like to see Albert achieve this year? <laughs> Maybe finishing his phonics, yeah. getting onto a few tricky words. Yay! Oh, um. see Albert's up for that as well. Albert has a minor speech delay. Um it's almost within the realms of normal, but we're just kind of giving him some extra support. So he's doing, he's starting phonics already, whereas we wouldn't have started for maybe a year or more, just beginning that. Um, so we're already doing it now with him to help with his speech. Um, so yeah, that would be cool, wouldn't it? It would be cool yeah. if maybe he was reading this time next year. That would be cool if that happened. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't expect it, but if he decides that he can do it. Does, does, do our friends not get to look at Daddy? <laughs> so the last well, question is, do you have anything to say to any dads out there watching this video? Now, according oh. to the... Don't let your child... Ah! Anywho... <laughs> don't let your children stand on your special areas when they come in. <laughs> or bounce. Or bounce, no. Um, so that's that's your advice for dads out there. So my, I think it's something according to the YouTube statistics, something like ninety five percent of my audience identify as female, mm -hmm. or I, or at least YouTube identifies you as female. Um, whether you do or not is entirely not the point apparently according to YouTube. But there is a small amount of people who identify themselves as men, and we're going to assume that they're all dads and that none of them are weird people just watching my channel for no reason. The other cats arrived now. Seriously, what's going on? <laughs> so you just get right in the way, dear. That's fine. Oh, there's a yep. Anyway, um, what would you like to say to the dads out there that are watching, especially the ones that have asked to see you in all your glory? <laughs> yes, I'll come on with video more if I must. <laughs> um, keep going at it. You can do it just as much as anyone no, else can. Can't me. And 
ignore anyone who tells you otherwise. I think that some of the things that some of the dads have said is that they feel like home education and homeschooling, because that's what they would call it in the US, is a very woman-centred environment, yeah. and that it's quite clicky. It really um, is. Um, and that they kind of feel a bit left out because lots of YouTubers are talking about like, hey ladies, hey moms, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, whereas, um, and, and, and kind of asked, can you make sure you're addressing us too? Because I'm a single dad and I'm home educating my children. Um, is there anything you want to say in relation to that as well? It's always going to be assumed that the woman's doing the teaching you know because that they were both generally the man goes out to work. I think I don't think that's sexism against men, is it? That's 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 not reverse sexism. That is sexism to women because they're assuming that. The obviously, in home. this situation, we are in that traditional traditional role where I'm staying at home yeah. and Phil's going to work. But that's because the jobs that I would be doing, I would not want to do. Whereas Phil actually likes his job. Mostly. Mostly, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be And you don't like tech, that was the other reason why you didn't stay home. That was one of the big reasons, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, people are always going to be clicky. And it can be annoying, but you can get through it. Your children's education is far more important than whether that set of families like you. And you can watch our channel, and I promise I will not ever start with gendered hello ladies or anything like that not only because i know there's dads watching because i also know there's people who um, are non-binary who may be watching and just people who are maybe questioning their gender and i don't think it's um fair to assume the gender of people who are watching because what do i know so yeah, yeah. so we're gonna have this lovely man on um, camera more um, <laughs> and possibly not do more family content because whilst there is some family content on here it is home education based and adult um, centered I'm not making videos for kids um, if you would like to see more videos of us as a family let me know in the comments and we'll we'll kind of try and see how we can do with those but that's not the main main focus here we will be doing some videos of us teaching the children um, various different things in the next coming months and they will be just raw unedited un un unedited that's not a word unedited <laughs> um lessons of us you know i'm gonna put the camera you know up high and just looking down on us and you'll hear us talking and our, those people and our conversations animals never work with animals or children phil um, <laughs> um just us how we're doing and in that you might see you might you will see raw family footage of us being like for god's sake get on with it woman. yeah stop messing around let's just get on with it um with our kids and stuff which we do sometimes have to do um but yeah so thank you very much for watching this video. Sorry, I just keep scratching my eye. I'm having some allergy issues this morning. Um, have a great week and hopefully we will see you on Friday. I'm not making any promises for my videos at the moment just because I'm still getting back into the swing of things. Um, but hopefully uh, Monday will be a regular feature again. So we'll see you later. Bye.